So what I've done here is drawn a Rubik's Cube within the SolidWorks design environment to explain how the Rubik's Cube works. When we look at this Rubik's Cube, one would often wonder how does this mechanism work and how do we get so many combinations? Well, at the heart of the Rubik's Cube is the key to how this mechanism works. I'm going to go ahead and hide all of the corners and sides so that we can just see the central pieces. With these components hidden, we can now see that at the center of the Rubik's Cube is a simple yoke that connects each of the central pieces. When looking at this yoke, we can now tell that the center pieces never change. So we know the side with the center green piece will always be the green side. The side with the central blue piece will always be the blue side. Now, the central pieces can rotate, and this is what starts the freedom of the Rubik's Cube. Let's go ahead and put our Rubik's Cube back together. With our Rubik's Cube now back together, again we can see that green piece will never move. However, there's nothing that fixes the corners or the sides, so these are the components that can move to any corner or the sides can move to any side. But how do those sides to move to any side or any corner? Let's take a look. I have now removed one full side. We can see how that central piece clips into our central yoke and we can also see how there's a cavity left by the other components leaving a perfectly round cut. There's a corresponding boss created by the components next to our central hub. So we can see that all of these components could rotate around that central hub. That same cavity would be left if I were to remove the back side, again allowing the Rubik's Cube to rotate. I'm going to go ahead and put my Rubik's Cube back together. And now let's see how this Rubik's Cube does in fact rotate. I'll select one complete side and then we'll start by rotating that side 45 degrees. We can see the central piece is staying in the same location and these outside pieces are spinning through that cavity that was created. Now I'm simply going to go ahead and complete this rotation. And now we've rotated these parts downwards. The blue piece that was up here is now down here. Now we can move this piece from this corner to this corner. I'll go ahead and rotate my Rubik's Cube around and again we'll rotate those components. I'm going to skip my intermediate step and simply create my 90 degree rotation. We can see that the number of combinations for this Rubik's Cube is growing very quickly as we begin to twist each of the individual sides of our Rubik's Cube. With each twist the puzzle becomes more jumbled. Then the challenge will become, how do we put this puzzle back together? Well, the keys to putting a Rubik's Cube back together are memorizing a sequence of twists called notations for each type of move. Each notation will move a component to a relative position. That may be twist the side, then twist the top, then twist. Each notation will consist of a series of moves that moves a component to a new position. Please keep an eye out for Inspirtech's Rubik's Cube videos as we begin to show you how to solve your Rubik's Cube with a series of notations. That concludes this first video and I hope it was an inspiration 
to get you to go out and buy that Rubik's Cube. Maybe by the time you've done that, you'll be able to find videos on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. If you would like a copy of a Rubik's... If you would like a SolidWorks copy of the Rubik's Cube, please visit insprotect.com and email support. Thank you, and that concludes this video.